Hello there and welcome. Welcome to Yoga Solutions with me, Mark J. Aquaviva. Um, yes, I hope you're doing wonderfully wherever you are in the world on this glorious summer's day. Um, on, what is it? 22nd of June, 2023. Okay, so um, <clears throat> yes, I, I, didn't, I haven't done a Yoga Solutions for a couple of weeks now. Uh, I didn't do one last week, so um, <clears throat> I thought it was about time. And um, so I'm just jumping on to see what comes up. Um, yes, I, I, I've had a, I've had a, yeah, I want to talk about what's going on for me. That's my only resource, really, um, uh, uh, apart from when I work with people directly. But um, yeah, uh, I, I've, I've had a shift. I've had a shift in my spine. There, there's been a minor scoliosis in the thoracic spine uh, below the neck since I was 13. And um, <clears throat> uh, it, it, it's meant that my neck and shoulders have been my area whenever I get stressed or, or life gets difficult or um, whatever. And um, yeah, uh, and the, the yoga solutions, um, you know, the, the, what is it, 30 years or now? 30 years ago now, um, when I sort of came back to yoga as an adult, I, I came back to, uh, I got into my yoga to find solutions for various aches and pains and difficulties in my body. And um, the, the neck issue was there at the beginning. And it, it came back whenever, as a kind of barometer for whatever um, I didn't quite have the right idea or something. And that, that's early, early days. And then um, after about 10 years or so, um, I found the solution. And um, does, that, does that mean it was fixed? Well, it meant I could sort it. It meant I could do something about it um, <clears throat> because I could do stuff physically that would uh, take away the issue. And the, the issue was um, an absence of movement in the thoracic spine below the neck. Um, so that, that was the outcome of the mini uh, scoliosis, which started when I was uh, 13 or something, probably late, probably younger, actually. Um, <clears throat> so, yeah. Um, and it's uh, I, I've kind of always been grateful to it because it always reminded me um, that... You know, I, I I can go, I can find a solution, but it's not just doing doing an exercise. It was about my relationships to things, and <clears throat> moreover, more obviously, in the last ten years or so, it's it's been about how I breathe because the way we hold ourselves and the way we breathe, uh, it's the same as who we are, and um, they're the same thing essentially. <clears throat> so, any kind of fundamental issue that you have repeating over and over and over again. It's a source issue <clears throat> to do with your life story, your history, whatever originating injury or um, difficulty you've had in your life that led to avoidance of sensation, you know, a, a postural attempt to avoid pain or difficulty. Um, <clears throat> it's these things that leave the issue in place and you can find a physical solution. But um, the, the, way, the only way it can become permanent is when the person changes the, per the person literally changes their mind um, and you can change your mind intellectually and you can respond to that cleverly by understanding the the body and what needs to happen <clears throat> and for for me it's the the waking up of the upper half of the rib cage and um, to in order to be able to move from the thoracic spine which was completely stuck before um, yeah, the, the, these are the physical things, but the thing that has changed for me very recently in the last probably six months or so, I would say, is I, um, the issue's gone. And the reason that's happened, what it goes along with, I have changed. I, I have changed somehow. Um, <clears throat> The way I've changed was was through the physical. It was through um, practicing these different relationships to things, so that um, you know my my rib cage could be involved in 
uh, grounded support and movement. Um, and the, the source of that change is my relationship to the world. The, the, the big one for my neck was um, how I, my, my face, my me, <laughs> how I relate to the world uh, from this place of speaking, you know, how, how, how I in interact, how I interact, no, that's not right, how I, um, yes, how I engage. And um, I remember when I first kind of realized that the thing I needed to do was uh, shift um, how my face is in space um, instead of my retraction where I'm trying to work things out about myself. I needed to be in the world, which was a, a kind of an opening of the throat and the face being forwards that led to a reason for my uh, body to move differently. So it was, in, it was in the personal shift, a shift in my personality, that the thing started to actually take effect. And the only thing that allowed that to happen was when my breathing changed to accommodate, which all my pranayama does and that i did a, <clears throat> a private pranayama group um uh, at the weekend with uh, abigail's um meditation group and um yeah it was a powerful powerful afternoon powerful day really and uh <clears throat> I, I, and it was glaringly obvious that um all physical issues are to do with how you hold yourself, how you hold yourself up. And the reason for holding yourself up is because you don't feel supported. And if you don't feel supported, it's because um, your breath is not finding support. You have to add breath. You have to breathe on top of whatever it is you're doing, which leads to these complications in your joints and everywhere else. But, um, you know, the, the shift, a, a change in an actual... I, 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 I got, um, got Abigail to check. Uh, to, to see because it, it, it's completely changed in my experience and uh, when I look at myself on screen I, I can see there's, uh, there's not my familiar um, distortion of the shoulders that goes with it um, not to the same degree anyway <clears throat> um, yeah I've got Abigail to check and, and the spine has actually changed structure and it's taken a long time it's taken a long time and this is the thing. The thing that takes time isn't understanding the body and knowing how it works. It, it's practice. But the thing that um, leads to permanent change is when the, the kind of source personal complication with life, the, your, the person's relationship to life, shifts in a way that allows that source issue to no longer be there. So yes, it's a <clears throat> yoga and personal development. It, it, it's it's a must if you want if you want to make actual transformational change. Anything less than that is maintenance, and you, uh, maintenance is fine if you've got a, a life that you want and it's going perfectly, perfectly as you as you wish it to be, and you don't suffer too much. Then there's um, then uh, maintenance yoga is, is is spot on, but if you are less than happy in your body, it's a sign that there is something that is less than happy in your relationship to the world, and that's the bottom line. Um, <clears throat> maybe I'll get I'll get some hate for this because it's uh, it's a broad statement, but kind of. Um, not something you might want to hear if you if you've got a chronic sort of thing going on for you. I'm not saying it's your fault. What I'm saying is that um, life and circumstances have conspired to um, create this physical issue that is a reflection of a person your personal relationship to everything that's happened, everything around you, <clears throat> and your breath is the thing that. Um, entrenches that because the way you breathe is the way you support yourself and it's the way you move. So it's a, it's, you know, it's a catch-22 sort of thing. And uh, yeah, it takes some dedication to the process and a willingness, a desire for change for the 
first of all, for the, you know, if you've got a physical solution to a physical issue, then that that's a light at the end of the tunnel. You can get relief, and I can give you that. You know, um, I, I know how that all goes, and that's what yoga solutions is about. But <clears throat> there is always a personal element. There's a reason that you hold yourself up with your knees and you have knee problems. There's a reason um, you hold tension around the base of the spine and, and you have sacral problems or around the neck and shoulders. There's a reason for it and, it, and it'll be a physical structural reason. And that structure is shaped by what you think, how you feel, whether you feel supported or not, and all the rest of it. Um, and with, with yoga, you can practice other ways of being. You can practice, um, if, if you're someone that retracts from life, you can practice physically being engaged with life through the breath and its release. And, you, and then the person gets the direct somatic experience of what it's like to be in a different per as a different person, if you, if you like. And uh, the the bridge, if you like, is um, that if you enjoy that feeling, if you like the difference, if you enjoy the different feeling, then you're more likely to adopt it, which in turn will move you towards the state, the type of person that wouldn't have that problem in the first place. So <clears throat> the physical yoga can be transformative, but... Um, you cannot leave out the personality uh, as as a function of something that you're working on. Uh, it needs to be part of what the yoga practice is supporting change within. So <clears throat> there you go, a, a little little sort of thing on um, yeah the personal development side of yoga practice. Now, uh, we, we, as human beings, we tend to compartmentalize things. Like uh, there's there's stuff that is for my mental health, there is stuff for my physical health, and then there's pranayama and, uh, and meditation. And, and we put them in little sort of pigeonholes of separate things. But they are all the same thing. They're, they are all about, um, they're all part of the same thing. You can't, you can't just pick. Well, you can, but uh, the result <laughs> will be less than complete. And um, if your <clears throat> aim is to um, improve quality of life as you get older, which has been my aim, then, then uh, yeah, uh, I, I'm, I'm the person you need to work with. And uh, you can um, approach your yoga w with these ideas that I'm offering. That being said, um, what, what, uh, oh yes, uh, there's one other aspect, um, uh, interesting outcome of my, uh, the spine below my neck, uh, freeing up and becoming the center of movement as opposed to being a thing I move around, um, <clears throat> is that it's, uh, highlighted, uh, a very, very ancient old problem that I used to have around the base of the spine, uh, uh, there's a, I think there's a hook, uh, a knock in my tail to one side, which uh, is probably the originating issue that caused the neck thing. Um, uh, I, God knows when it happened. It could have been when I was tiny. could have been when I was a baby. Uh, who knows? But um, luckily, that, that area was the first area that I, I kind of uh, dealt with when I got back into my yoga. Um, uh, I suffered a, a prolapse disc when I was doing my teacher training and so so I had to find solutions directly for that <clears throat> and so um, that, that doesn't worry me at all I, I, can, I know what to do physically um, to to support freedom around there even if it's complaining and um, and yeah so I can let it go uh, <clears throat> but um, yeah uh, my point is I think that fundamental structural issues in the body are uh, they take a while to undo uh, and they're going to be source issues in per in personality as well so um, my, my my neck and shoulder thing was around feeling the need to retract from the world in order to be myself and around expression 
and feeling uh, feeling heard and and free to express myself. And uh, yeah, that that freedom has arrived with the release of the neck and the, the bit of spine below that was stuck. Um, issues around the the root, the tail, the sacrum, um, the the lower half of the body. Generally speaking, it makes sense that you don't feel supported. I don't feel I didn't feel supported as a child. And um, so there was an awful lot of tension in that area. It's trying to keep me, keep me supported, make me feel safe. And um, <clears throat> there's a structural side to it. There's an intelligence to it. it it's uh, holding around there might be the thing that you would automatically do. But the actual answer is to, f to find inner support. So I know what to do. Kabbalah uh, Bhati, I can access the the kind of deeper abdominal muscles that get involved with uh, supporting myself through my feet and, and uh, moreover all of that stuff is meaningless if I can't breathe whilst I do it so it it, be, it becomes the way I breathe by dropping through that space in order to breathe instead of holding myself up to breathe um, these muscles naturally get involved with my support because I breathe and then when I release the breath it's a place I can relax into, so I'm I'm left with uh, space and freedom and support, uh, all the stuff I need. But um, perhaps I uh, I'll get to a place where I no longer need to give that any attention when I, my hook Jayak or even, feel entirely supported by the world. That's something only I can develop in my personality. No, there's there's no framework of reality that where that says that that is the case I, it's about my relationship to feeling supported that uh, will allow me to adopt the breathing and the postural strategy of, of uh, core support from the use of my legs uh, that happens when it's how i feel and um, the practice and the the outcome of doing those practices leads me in that direction where I do feel supported, where I do feel freer to let go around the, around the base of things. And um, eventually I will step in line and it will just be who I am. So uh, it, I, I believe, and I'm sorry this is turning into a bit of a lecture, but I, I, it's an important aspect of practice. Um, <sighs> Yeah, I, I believe the, the, the purpose of all of these wellness practices isn't just for maintenance, um, un, unless you're perfectly happy and always have been. You know? uh, they're powerful enough to transform you. And mind and body don't transform independent of each other. Whatever's going on in the mind, the body has to follow for it to be a, an actual change. Otherwise, it's just a temporary moment in time where you feel a particular way you need to integrate body and mind soul and soul and heart you know emotions and basically body and mind integrating together in relationship to this world that we live in this wonderful world that we live in is the thing that can lead to the experience of heaven on earth and, and that's what i practice for that's what i practice for and uh, that's the thing I, I, I've been shouting from the rooftops about for most of my career. And um, yeah, uh, and um, yeah, I always worried, I always worried that once I'd sorted my body out, that I would no longer want to teach. And something along those lines is kind of starting to arise. But it, I don't want to stop sharing because I know um, it, it all seems so obvious to me these days that um, it, it would be uh, entirely selfish of me to just um, back off and do my own thing and look after myself and those that I know and love, you know? Um, it, and there's, there's so much misunderstanding out there in the world about, about body work and 
<clears throat> and particularly in yoga, it's it's got so popular, and it's been so distorted by by populism that um, the 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 whole subject of it is is reduced to the 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 uh, common opinion of what it's all about, um, and that precludes people from the true transformative power of yoga practice which is a personal development um it's a limb of personal development it's a part of an integral part of it. and uh, that that being missing in the in the west is is um doing a disservice to the word yoga it really is um <clears throat> so yeah and uh, uh, i'm feeling you know so uh, my yoga is for my my intention from the very beginning. I could see the potential. I could see the possibility that I would get um, happier as I got older, happier in my body as I got older. And uh, this is such the um, opposite to what is expected. Um, that it, it flies in the face of tradition and, and common thinking. But it's... To date, it's been true. I'm now 61, 30 years on, a bit more than 30 years from when I uh, took the yoga path as an adult. And on a, on a year by year basis, I find myself less complicated in my personality. I find myself easier in myself. I find my, uh, my body is more comfortable as I get older. And, um, yeah, my, my strength is not waning. It's um, I have less kind of need to um, have the approval of the world, <laughs> which uh, in reality was probably part of my drive to be to share this stuff because I wanted people to appreciate it and feel good for it, um, and I still want that. Um, <clears throat> but um, I don't. I don't. I'm feeling less than I need to persuade people um so maybe this is uh, you know th this particular yoga solutions is uh my kind of swan song in in terms of um uh persuading people to try my stuff out um whether it works or not uh i i mind less and less um i i have a, a dedicated group of people that have been working with me for a while now and um, new ones turn up every now and again and uh, and uh, stick with me. So uh, what I'm thinking long term, uh, it's not going to be a sudden change, but uh, what I'm thinking long term is um, I, I will reduce my kind of public, free public offerings and concentrate my uh, teaching efforts on those that have uh, adopted uh, my work and um, there are a few of my teachers who might might be able to get to work with some of them. Um, but uh, yeah, reduce my efforts to working with those that already kind of get the depth and value of my work and have applied themselves to it and wish to continue to do so. So um, <clears throat> I may become less public. I will probably keep my yoga solution going for a while because um, I like to have a um, somewhere to offer these things when when I get a little inspiration from my own practice, I like to offer what I my insights to people. Uh, but uh, over time, I think I will reduce that to a subscription service for for those that um, <clears throat> want it, rather than putting myself out there to catch new clients. You know, it's, um, I'm less and less interested in that. So. Um, yeah, that's about it. Um, that's all I, what I wanted to share. Now, <clears throat> what should I do in in terms of giving you a little bit of yoga on this one? Um, yeah, okay. So the simplest thing I can share is something to do with the, uh, the pranayama thing I did. Um, it's a very simple um, premise, and it's kind of based on everything I've just said. As in, 
the breath is the kind of center of, well, the access point to change. Changing the breath is not something you can do um, through will, not, not, not naturally anyway. Um, um, and chain, uh, the breath can only change naturally. It has to become um, a part of you for it to be of any use. Um, so I think the thing I'm going to share with you is just to give you a, a sense of that, how it's the breath that makes a difference. So what we'll do is we'll experiment with, because uh, I'm on camera and it's simple, we'll just experiment with a seated twist. So if you um, turn to one side and do your best possible twist and stay there. And notice when if you're trying to get a little bit further in your twist, what happens with your breath? Most of you will feel restricted by the effort to some degree. You can take little sips of breath. And I, I remember that being an instruction I was given, uh, was given once um, in order to achieve the posture. <laughs> Missing the point entirely. But you can take little si sips of breath and get on with the exercise of holding a twist. All right. So come out of it. The thing that was restricted then was the arriving breath which is why it felt um, like the breath was restricted. So what I'd um, like you to do this time is to we'll break down the physical actions of twisting. Now you can you can pull yourself around with your with your legs and, and your groins and your shoulders and your neck and all that sort of thing. Now, rather than that, if you draw your belly back so you have a bit more space in there, and you'll find the breath is restricted by that, but it's restricted in the belly. It's not restricted across your heart. It's not restricted if you lower your head slightly. It won't be restricted for the neck and shoulders. So draw your belly back a bit to make a bit more space in there, because that's, that's where the movement of turning happens. And take a breath um, across your heart. So uh, the, the, the pranayama that relates to that it's called seat kari it's where you uh, it's called that because it's onomatopoeic you make the sound seat as you breathe in and it's a breath that smiles across the heart so i like to add a physical action involving your arms as well where you smile the breath in across the heart belly empty making the sound seat so sucking the air in through your teeth with a smile okay and that's a physical action that you can engage with as you breathe. When you release the breath, um, seek Kari, the, the second part of the onomatopoeia is calm. <sighs> so if you practice that pranayama for me, hollow belly, neck relaxed, breath climbs and widens from the heart with the sound seat. You hold the breath for a moment and find balance with it. Make sure that your back is not holding you up. It's just a held breath. And then car is like uh, uh, you just had a nice cooling drink. <sighs> so you let go on the inside. And the chest and ribs drop over the space you've created in the abdomen. Okay, so we'll do that again. This time we're going to breathe into action. So the belly sucks up. And you smile the breath in through, let's say, the left-hand side. Whole body action. That takes you out to the left. So now you are breathing what you're doing, rather than doing what you're doing and then trying to breathe on top. So it will be hard work. When you get there, place your hand, put your hands in place. You're still retaining the breath. Make sure you can relax your back and your neck if possible whilst you hold the breath. So you find the point of balance when you're not pulling yourself around with your back or your groins. Then let the breath go with a satisfied sigh, ka. And you'll find your rib cage is the thing that does the turning. I'll try that again, hollow belly. Express it, so your face, your wing, you as a human being can celebrate this movement 
with through the breathing you arrive in a place where you can be supported find that support before you release so that when you let go you let go on the inside and you let go you already let go on the outside you'll notice that the term comes from the rib cage and the upper spine it's not you pulling around with your waist one more time support so you can relax your back now you've done that and if you kind of let the exhale um, create more of a twist in order to breathe you just let go you'll be in a structural arrangement that is twisting where you're rotated through the ribcage like a spiral staircase so there's nothing to do you let go to breathe and if you can successfully um, stay released in your lower back and your neck and shoulders depending on how you're finding support from your uh, through your relaxed base and through the use of the arms if you can remain relaxed in the spine as you release the breath the same dynamic continues the belly empties the ribs gather and get involved with twisting you because you breathe and because you let go of the breath In fact, the breath having the quality of a celebrated, light-bellied um, smile through the heart and the release of the breath being a satisfied release of your weight and effort. It'll be your breathing gear that is doing the turning. Now, it was a while ago, so maybe just try the other side. Just pull yourself around to the other side to do a twist and feel, feel how restricted that is now. And if you want to sort that out, instead of pulling yourself around to do a posture, breathe yourself around. Find support and balance. Release into what you wish to happen. Totally different experience, I think. Of course you can do a twist, you know, of course you can make shape. Um, but the way, if, if it's not with these kind of um, deeper functions in agreement with it, you're, you're, you're imposing on the body. You're, you're doing something to the body, which is okay. But it doesn't lead to any permanent change. Uh, that just causes you to always twist in that way, to always move in that way. Whereas integrating the breath, first of all, if, you, if you're not familiar with opening your heart as you breathe, if you're not familiar with core action as you breathe, then you won't have the way of breathing into the thing. If you could recognize it as you celebrating what you're doing as a, as a, as a kind of personal relationship to the space that you're moving into, you can recognize the arriving breath as that. It's not something you're doing to your body. And then you're gifted the facility, letting go into what you're doing. Your body responding in a way that completes the task. So there's a little bit of pranayama for you. With, um, uh, not very well known breath called Sikari. Apart from people who work with me, everyone, they all know that. Um, yeah, so I think that will do for Yoga Solutions today. Um, again, it, it was a bit of a lecture on um, the importance of um, connecting your yoga practice directly to the qualities you wish to achieve in life for yourself and, and in your personality. Um, and a little bit of a direct experience of the difference between, well, the gateway to that. It's uh, through practice and through the breath. Um, applying your relationship to the world, your breathing to the thing that you wish to do and finding the most kind of enjoyable way of doing that uh, is going to lead to better results than making the body do anything. 
anyway, I hope that was useful. And um, yeah, I will. I'll probably keep these going as I get inspired to say this, that, and the other. But, um, yes, I will be reducing my free offerings. Um, I'll, I'll, you know, this this, this group will um, will stay here, and there's there's hundreds of videos just on this group. I think. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I may begin to uh, present the ideas that I have as a blog, and uh, that blog will be attached to a class for uh, my premium subscribers. Uh, and I say premium, it's uh, currently you can, you can um, get access to hundreds of these yoga solutions for um, a bit more than a pound a week. So it's uh, yeah, about, about five or a month uh, on silver membership. And um, yeah, for five or a month, you get access to, to a year's worth of content if, you, if you're interested in joining my website. Um, okay, that'll do for me for now. I shall love you and leave you. And yeah, I wish you health and happiness. Much love to you. Bye now.